Hey there, Main Recap is back and today I'm going to recap a crime mystery series called Dear Child. Hannah, the main character in the series, is too young for a recap, so I'll do my best to present this amazing series, full of twists and turns, to you. Episode 1 of Dear Child begins with a woman and two children playing inside a house. When the father approaches the room, they all line up with their hands held out in front of them. The man, we don't see his face, seems happy with the condition of the kids' palms and lets them go with a bar of chocolate. When he gets to the woman, we see a round mark on her hand. She is scared and crying. The man tells her to remember the rules. The next scene cuts to the woman running away from something. She's dressed in a white nightgown and is frantically running through a forest. She sees a passing car and runs towards it. A crash is heard. In an ambulance, doctors try to stabilize the woman. In the corner, a little girl named Hannah sits shrouded in a blanket. She tells them her mother's blood type is AB and her name is Lena. When her heart rate increases, Hannah tells her mother that she is right there beside her. A policewoman stands by the site of the accident and tells someone on the phone about a hit and run. She sees something in the forest and investigates it but doesn't find anything. We see somebody hiding amongst the trees. As Lena is taken inside the hospital, Hannah looks at all her surroundings with awe. She wanders around while her mother is rushed inside. When a nurse named Ruth approaches, Hannah holds out her hands. Ruth asks about her last name and Hannah says Goliath, but claims to have just decided on it herself. While Lena is being operated on, we see flashes of the abuse she endured. Her voice is heard, begging to be allowed to sleep. The doctors then realize that something is wrong as Lena begins to convulse. Ruth gets Hannah some new clothes and asks her about the hit and run. She claims the man who hit her mother was nice and stayed until the ambulance was near. She describes her mother as really clumsy and says she needs help to even stay upright on the toilet seat. To Ruth's shock, she then reveals Lena wanted to kill her father by accident. Ruth is shaken and goes off to find Hannah some drawing supplies. On her own, Hannah tells herself that she did everything right. She's a big girl after all. Ruth goes out and meets Aida Kurt from Aachen CID, who is with the policewoman from earlier. She conveys what Hannah told her. In the hospital's break room, Hannah looks out of the window and names the objects she sees, including a circulation machine. The lack of a last name and address perturbs Ada. Ruth goes to call someone from the psychology department, and Aida tells the policewoman to look at escape routers around the forest. A man named Gerd Buhling looks at the hit-and-run police report on his computer, and something seems to strike him as odd. He makes a phone call. An old man rouses from his sleep and picks it up. Gerd tells the old man that a woman named Lena has been found and is admitted to Aachen University Hospital. The phone suddenly disconnects. The old man, Matthias Beck, tells his wife, Karen Beck, that their Lena has been found alive. The doctors finish the surgery on Lena. They were given the wrong blood type but managed to save her. The surgeon tells a nurse to find out why the mistake was made. Meanwhile, Hannah draws her house on a sheet of paper and tells Ruth that she has a younger brother named Jonathan. She seems unconcerned that he's alone at home and refuses to give her home address. She even colors the windows in black, saying they don't need to see through the windows since the circulation machine gives them air to breathe. We then see Lena sleeping in a bed with the kids, struggling to breathe. A man in a gas mask comes in and says the ventilation is working again. Hannah drowsily thanks her father. Ruth asks Hannah about her house, but Hannah claims they shouldn't be found. She describes a blow to a skull and the noise it makes, making Ruth increasingly uncomfortable. The Becks are on their way when Gerd calls them and tells Karen that the woman may not be their Lena, but they decide to go to the hospital anyway. Aida speaks to the doctor who tells her about the mess up of the blood type. She then greets a doctor named Benedict Hamstead, who's here to speak to Hannah. They enter the break room and Hannah stands up with her hands out again. She says the nails have to be clean, and she must show she's not hiding any kind of weapon. Ada does the same to show Hannah she's not holding anything. Ruth takes Ada outside and narrates everything Hannah said about the house and Jonathan. We see clips of young Jonathan cleaning a bloodstain off a carpet. Behind him, a man seems unconscious on the floor, 
Benedict asks Hannah about her father, and she says her mother hurt him by accident. Ida enters and questions Hannah about friends and school. She says they don't need friends and she's homeschooled. She claims her mother told her about her blood type. Ida asks what they were running away from, but she doesn't respond. She names a cat, Miss Tinky, and then puts her head down on the table. Eyes closed. We can hear her thinking. She wants to go home. Or to the seaside with her mother, like they had gone once. While investigating around the forest, the policewoman sees a flash of light and follows it but doesn't find anything. Benedict tells Aida they're going to need time with Hannah. He says Hannah will stay here for the rest of night. Aida gets a phone call. Matthias and Karen get ready to go see Lena, as one of the doctors tells them about her condition. Ruth enters the break room and pats Hannah, who hugs her. She asks to see her mother. Inside Lena's hospital room, Matthias grows distraught when he sees her and realizes that she isn't his daughter. Gerd, who is from State CID, meets Ada at the hospital. He recognizes her from her application to State Seed. He tells her he was in charge of the Lena Beck case, a woman who disappeared 13 years ago. They hear a commotion and follow to see Matthias being held back by two nurses. Gerd calms Matthias down, but Matthias retorts that Gerd had promised to bring their daughter home. At that moment, Ruth arrives in hand with Hannah while escorting her to see her mother. On seeing Hannah, both Matthias and Karen recognize her and call her Lena. In Hannah's mind, she calls Matthias grandfather. On the outside, she hides behind Ruth. In the hospital room, the woman's thoughts show that she can hear everything but can't do anything about it. She then think, Lena, you know what he did. Episode 2 of Dear Child begins with Hannah narrating a sweet story about how her parents met and fell in love. At the same time, we see a woman walking on the road while on the phone. A car rolls up behind her and flashes its headlights. At present, the Becks and Gerd tell Ida that Hannah looks exactly like Lena used to at that age. The woman in the hospital has a scar on her hand, same as Lena did. But she's not Lena. Ida asks Gerd for the case file and DNA of Lena Beck. She then tells the Becks what they've learned about Jonathan and the house. At the house, we see the man is still on the floor. His head is covered. A flashback shows him unlocking handcuffs that tied Lena to the bed. As he does so, he thanks her and says he had a good time. Aida tells the Becks to go home as they wait for the DNA comparison test. When she asks about their daughter's blood type, Karen says it's AB negative. Aida wonders why Gerd was in charge of the Lena Beck case when he was friends with Matthias. He says he hid the fact at the time, frustrating Aida. Gerd describes how there have been no leads on Lena for 13 years. Aida then gets a phone call and asks Gerd to be with the Becks while she's away. He promises to update her if the woman wakes up. Matthias covertly makes his way to the break room and sits by Hannah. He sees a drawing of the house made by Hannah. He promises to take her home. Gerd visits the woman's hospital room and begins to question her despite the fact that she's unconscious. When he asks what her name is, she wakes up. The doctor rushes to her. In her head, we hear a man's voice giving her orders instructing her to lie. The woman says her name is Lena. The voice praises her and she passes out again. As the voice continues talking, we see her daily schedule. In the morning, she must make the kids breakfast, milk and a chocolate bar. When she can't open the milk can, Hannah helps her out. She looks scared and confused and grabs Hannah's wrist, begging her for help. She then passes out. Hannah looks into a camera in the room and tells her father that her mother had another attack. In a haze, the woman sees Matthias tell her that he'll take care of Hannah now. Near the site of the accident, police forces and their dogs are out looking for the house and for Jonathan. They use Lena's clothes for scent. A man drives up to the roadblock in a car and asks about the situation. The policewoman questions him, but he seems to be regular security personnel. Gerd calls Aida and tells her about the woman's brief consciousness. He also tells Ida the scar on the woman's hand looks new and not decades old, as it should be. Hannah wakes up to breakfast and Dr. Hampstead in her room. The daylight from the window hurts her eyes. Hannah claims to know that Matthias is her grandfather and remembers meeting him during a trip with her mother. But it's a secret. Benedict narrates this to Gerd, who is surprised to think that Matthias might have met her before. 
Gerd then says he needs a DNA sample from Hannah. Hannah continues telling stories to Ruth about how she and her mother even went to Paris. Ruth gifts her a pair of sunglasses and encourages her to look outside the window. Hannah does so and waves her hands through the rays of sunlight. Gerd goes to see Matthias and Karen and tells them what he heard. He asks Matthias if he's seen Hannah before but both of them get angry with him. Ruth collects the DNA sample from Hannah and then tells her she will have to go and stay at Benedict's hospital soon. She asks if she can go see her mother. Ruth agrees but says it should be their secret. One of the policemen finds a piece of fabric on a fence. It's near a decommissioned military field. Still wearing sunglasses, Hannah visits the woman in the hospital. Secretly, she takes something from her pocket and puts it in Lena's hand. She whispers, After she leaves, the woman opens her eyes and sees a piece of glass in her palm. She hides it under a blanket. Aida and the policewoman observe the military field but aren't allowed to enter. Gerd tries speaking to the woman again and asks for her real name. He asks if she knows Lena and shows her a picture. When the woman asks about Lena, Gerd begins to describe her, her talent for drawing and the potential of her future. But after a party one night, she disappeared. Everyone was suspected, even her ex, but they never found anything. The woman begins to say something about a man, but then her heart rate increases and the doctor sends Gerd out. The woman whispers to the doctor, asking to find out if she's pregnant. A flashback shows the woman being told to tell the kids a bedtime story. She looks shocked and beaten up. The kids are behaving like nothing is wrong. The man watches from the sidelines and orders her to get up when the kids can't select a story. Matthias sees Hannah being put in a car to be taken to Benedict's hospital. He runs out of the room. In the car, Benedict tells Hannah about the clinic. Matthias seems to be following them. Karen tries calling him but can't get through. Gerd comes by and apologizes for earlier. Karen tells him Matthias had gotten better but now he's regressing again. They discuss how Gerd is doing and he then tells Karen to go home and wait. Benedict and Hannah reach the clinic but keep listening to songs in the car. Matthias watches them from afar. Aida convinces a SWAT team to not wait for official permission and instead break through the fence to the military area. The security guard from earlier suddenly comes by and tells them the area is restricted. Aida has the men go inside anyway. At the house, Jonathan sees through the open front door. After the men go inside, a blast is heard and Aida runs over. One of the men has had part of his leg blasted off. The place is rigged with mines and Ida finds herself standing right in the middle. Thanks for watching. And if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to hit that subscribe button so you never miss out on our latest content. You can also give us a thumbs up if you liked what you saw.